The iPad Pro 2021, powered by Apple's own M1 processor. The M stands for mind-boggling. This is the fastest tablet in the market. And yet, it's mind-boggling that we can't fully take advantage of the power it offers. But I have a feeling that we're just getting started. The processor architecture, the huge amount of memory and GPU cores is head and shoulders above the competition. But all of this power feels pointless as the hardware specs seem to be ahead of what is possible with the software. Thin, very light, the design, whilst not new, is a work of art. But something as basic in functionality as connecting to an external display is still not possible. The display for me is the crown jewel of this device. It's the beautiful Liquid Retina XDR. With technology stolen from Apple's own top tier professional display, this thing really is beautiful to watch. With true to life detail, 120Hz refresh rate or ProMotion and great contrast ratio, it makes content watching, photo editing or video editing an absolute pleasure. And I don't have a counter for this one. This one is legit. But should you buy one? It's been two months now. The honeymoon period is definitely over. Am I still impressed with this machine as I was when I first unboxed it? Would I recommend this iPad Pro? Yes and no. Let's have a chat. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews. I'm here at least once a week. Well, this week, I think this is my fourth video, so I need some sleep. The iPad Pro 2021 is an incredible tablet. As you've seen in the intro, the specs from a hardware perspective are very impressive. At first, my thought was that these amazing specs were kind of irrelevant when you look at what's possible on the software side of things. But the more I used it and the more I discovered in terms of possibilities, the more I realized that yes, there is a lot of room for improvement, but I shouldn't really complain too much. There's nothing else out there able to deliver more than what this can. But let me be clear about something. I still think Apple overpromised in April and underdelivered. In my opinion, Apple were deliberately mis-selling the iPad Pro under the premise that this is your next computer. As we know, it isn't. As far as Apple sales is concerned, they still want you to buy their own laptop. But at some point in the near future, I think they will have to make a decision. Surely you can't have a MacBook line that doesn't have a touch screen, for example, like every other laptop on the planet. And really, you shouldn't be asking people to drop almost $2,000 or over $2,000 on a tablet and not offer them more capabilities. In my opinion, they are deliberately not giving iPad users more power to avoid losing MacBook sales. Because in all honesty, they know that people dropping so much cash on a tablet are likely to drop cash on a laptop as well. It forces a large portion of the market to pick one or the other. They know, I think they know that a lot of their customers have the acquisition power to get both. So yeah, how long you can go on selling tablets with so much power and not deliver on software? I don't know. And I've heard the counter argument as well. Oh, you know, if you want a laptop, buy a laptop. Or iPad is fine as it is. You know, Apple didn't promise pro apps. And yeah, they didn't promise pro apps, but they promised a pro experience. How the hell is it that we can't get the iPad plugged into an external monitor and just work? Why do we have to still put up with these black bars? Oh, Alex, you know, that's not how to use an iPad. You know, it was never meant to be used like that. I'm sorry, but it's a $2,000 machine. I think plug into an external monitor is a bare minimum requirement. <laughs> Bit of a rant there, but hopefully you see where I'm coming from. Now let's talk about the things that I've enjoyed in the last two months. And we can't ignore this beautiful display. Gaming on it or watching my favorite shows has been an absolute delight. In any condition, during the day, outdoors or in the evenings, the games on the iPad look amazing. We still don't get the haptics uh, you know, that we were promised, but man, it is nice to play games on this. It would be great to get some big names developing more for the iPad, but with what we've got right now, it's pretty good. As I said, I'd love to get haptics feedback, but we live in hope. One of the things that surprised me the most about the iPad is the quality of the speakers. Listening to music or watching content is great and most of the time I don't even need to wear my headphones. The speakers on the iPad have really impressed me. I thought initially it was just me but I heard from other creators in some of the comments as well in my previous videos that the speakers on this iPad really deliver. I won't be able to make justice here on YouTube but I'll play a few seconds on it in comparison with other iPad and an older one just so you can get an idea. This is not meant to be a fair comparison, just a guideline for you, know, for you to see how impressive this is. It's 
crazy, isn't it? Hopefully you were able to, to hear the difference there. And let me tell you, if you can go to a shop and experience it, do that. It is, it is pretty good. Guys, before we talk about the Thunderbolt performance, quick reminder that I have done over 100 videos on this channel, some of questionable quality, uh, I'll give you that, but I'm still learning and some are pretty good. I'm having loads of fun. So if you like my stuff, it will be awesome if you subscribe to my channel. Oh yeah, don't forget the bell. See, we even have an actual bell here. So you don't see that every day. Right, Thunderbolt, pretty much the theme of this video. Initially, I hated how slow it was. <laughs> but now with iPad OS 15 or be in the beta version, we're finally getting much more decent speeds uh, when it comes to file transfer. So loving that, getting about 500 megs per second using my SunDisk SSD connected directly, which is not blazingly fast, but much better than the 30 meg that I was getting uh, on iOS 14.6. This is consistent when using a Thunderbolt 4 hub, like this one here from OWC. I was able to get between 450 and 530 megs per second, again, much faster than my previous 30 megs per second. But that, my friends, is where the good news stopped for me on the Thunderbolt. I won't go on much further, but I really wish we had proper external display support. We still get the B-Bod. I just trademarked that, it's the black bars of doom. In Windows, we have BSOD, the blue screen of death. In iPad OS, we have BBOD. And I'll leave it there. It's just terrible. Come on, Apple. Come on. Now, what really makes the iPad experience more enjoyable and arguably more complete are the accessories. The Magic Keyboard is probably the most expensive keyboard you will ever buy, but it is pretty special. I love my mechanical keyboard right here, but there's something really pleasing about typing on this keyboard. And if you're used to typing on a MacBook laptop, the transition here is pretty seamless. You got the pen, of course, which is very responsive. It's such an underrated accessory. But what about the accessories outside of the Apple world? Well, there's so much to talk about, and I've already done a few videos on iPad accessories, that you can check out you know, on this playlist that we'll leave at the end. But just a quick special mention to this beautiful stand from Satechi and this super capable Thunderbolt 4 hub from OWC. I'm really happy with the performance on this hub. Both of these accessories uh, won't clutter your setup. Talking about that, I didn't want to clutter this video with lots of products, so I'll make sure to pin a comment of, of the videos that I've done on accessories to help you keep your setup as clean as possible. So in the last two months of daily usage, it's been very much a love and hate relationship so far. On balance though, if I'm really honest with myself, I just bought the wrong spec. I've already done a rant video on this and I don't wanna to think too much about it, but basically, yeah, 16 gig RAM is absolutely useless so far. Eight gig would have been plenty for me. Uh, I'm still hoping that Apple will prove me wrong and allow developers to take advantage of all of these resources and the apps like Procreate, LumaFusion, Lightroom will continue to be developed to take advantage of all of this power. Uh, before I forget guys, I also covered a lot more details on things like battery performance and other aspects of the iPad Pro in my one month review. So make sure to check that out. Would I recommend this device to you? Absolutely, but make sure you select the right spec. And if you're not interested in the new display or the Thunderbolt capability, then you may as well go with the 2020 iPad Pro, which is still an absolute beast. You know, you can probably find some good deals out there. And if you don't care about Apple at all, then take a look at the Samsung tablet. The Tab S7 Plus is an impressive tablet with some limitations, of course, on software and apps, but it could suit some people. I'll see you in your smiley faces on the next one. Bye.